Ladies and gentlemen, this is Ken Carpenter. Last week, another summertime began as spring and moon and June ended. But we can always take a little extra time for romance, so tonight we bring you one more spring. And as our star, we have one of our loveliest girls from the 20th Century Fox Studios, Miss Jean Crane. And now, Miss Jean Crane, starring in Robert Nathan's delightful romance, One More Spring. Can I help you? I, I wondered, that crystal candelabra in your window... How much does it cost? Oh, I'm very sorry, miss. That candelabra's not for sale. Oh, and I had my heart set on it. Well, that's the only thing I keep in the window because it isn't for sale. And so I never have to take it out to show anyone. But the candelabra was the, the only thing I wanted. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Well, if you won't sell it, I suppose you won't. I've often meant to stop in and ask about it. You see, I, I live nearby. Oh, yes, and... I, I, I think I've noticed you passing the windows. Your, your face is very familiar. Oh, perhaps you've seen me on the stage. Well, you're an actress? Of course, I really should buy a pair of candelabra, not just one. I've a rather large living room. One candelabra might seem lost in it. Well, I, I must get to rehearsal. Goodbye. Goodbye. Mr. Otcar, why didn't you sell it to her? You could use the money. Well, that candelabra's been in the family ever since I can remember. I, I couldn't sell it. Well, well, that's your affair. My job is to take over your... Creditors, I've uh, one or two papers for you to sign, that's all. Too bad you're losing your business. Well, it wasn't much of a business, and I guess I wasn't much of a businessman. Uh, where do I sign? For right here. Thanks. Oh, I'm sorry to have to put you out, Mr. Otcar. Well, don't mention it. Where are you going, Mr. Otcar? No place special. Oh, that's how it always is. Uh, don't you have a home, Mr. Otcar? Uh, no, I've been sleeping here in back of the shop. Oh, you can help me pile my things on that little pushcart outside, if you will. Well, hey, at least you've got a bed. <laughs> Net proceeds of Jared Otcar's flyer in the antique business. A bed, a crystal candelabra, a stove, and an umbrella. <laughs> what more could a man want? Where will you go, Mr. Otcar? Well, first, I must think. And I always do that best in Central Park. I beg your pardon, sir? Yes? Uh, permit me to present my card. Well, thanks. Morris Rosenwald, concert violinist. Lessons, master classes, and concerts. Turn the card, please. On the other side, you will find reviews of my concerts. Mr. Rosenwald is a genius on the violin. The Oswego Press said that. Mr. Rosenwald was the violinist of the evening. Uh, that's from the Galesburg Democrat. Mr. Rosenwald was adequate. I don't recall the name of that newspaper. Uh, why did you speak to me? You have a sympathetic face. Uh, and what are you doing in New York City? I thought in this great metropolis I could play many concerts. But the truth is, I have only performed on street corners. Uh, when did you eat last? Since you ask. Two days ago I had something. Well, I have a sandwich here in my pocket. Oh, no. Oh, I insist. You'll have half and I'll have half. Well, perhaps, if you insist. Just a bite. Thank you. Yeah, eat slowly or you'll get indigestion. Now, why don't you sell your violin and invest in some business? Sell my fiddle? How could I give concerts without it? No, I hadn't thought of that. Uh, where do you live, Mr. Rosenwald? Here in the park. The birds wake me every morning, singing out of tune. I am as homeless as yourself. But I notice you have a fine bed there on your push car. Yeah, I also have slats for my bed and a mattress. Perhaps we can be homeless together. Oh, you mean we should set up the bed somewhere in the park? I know of a small valley in the center of the park. It is hidden by lilac bushes. We might escape the attention of the police. Very well. Come. I will help you to push the cart into the park. We are pioneers, Mr. Rosenwald, pushing into the wilderness to find a new home. <laughs> Hello there. I, I beg your pardon? Don't you remember? You were in my antique shop this afternoon. Oh, 
Oh, yes. The crystal candelabra. What are you doing here? Oh, I was sitting on this bench, listening to the music. It's the last dance of the season. I know. I was watching. All those young couples dancing in the starlight. Yeah, I'm surprised to meet a famous actress walking in the park. Well, I, I'm very fond of walking. Mm -hmm. I, I, I suppose I should know your name, but I've been to the theater so seldom lately. Well, then it isn't likely you'd know my name. It's Janie. Elizabeth Janie. And you're Mr. Atkar. I saw your name on the sign in your shop window. What's your first name? Uh, Jared. It's a nice name. And you have a very nice shop. And not anymore. A deputy sheriff has it. Oh, you've lost it. I'm afraid I wasn't meant to run an antique shop. Why not? Well, actually, it belonged to an uncle of mine. He died just after I got out of the army. I put all my savings in the shop to save it for his wife. Then she died and the whole thing belonged to me. Well, I'm very sorry that you've lost your shop. Oh, don't be. For a long time, I wanted to be free to travel and see America, you know, that sort of thing. Well, now I can. Yes, it's good to be free. Oh, I just thought... Yes? If you lost your shop, you also lost your candelabra. Oh, no, no, it was an heirloom. Belonged to my grandparents. The deputy sheriff let me keep it. Oh, I'm glad. If I can't have it, I'm glad you still have it. Goodness, what, what's that? What? Something in your pocket. I, I felt it break. The, the eggs. The what? I had two eggs and I think... <laughs> yes, they're broken. In your pocket? Oh, how terrible. What will your wife say? I, I haven't got a wife, but Mr. Rosenwall will say plenty. Who is he? We share Central Park, Mr. Rosenwall and I. Oh. Now, I, I really must leave you. I have an appointment with some friends at the plaza. Good night. Good night. Ah, oh, Jared, it is good to rest here on your beautiful carved bed in this valley in Central Park that belongs to us. If only we had a bit of food. Well, tonight I will catch one of those fat pigeons and roast it over a fire. Now tonight when we have a fire... Perhaps you'll play your violin for me. I am not a gypsy. My fiddle would catch a cold in the night air. Mr. Rosenwald, we are caught. What? Someone is standing at the foot of our bed. It's Mr. Sweeney. Ah. Uh, he is a friend? Mr. Sweeney is a music lover. He is also a street cleaner. For many weeks I have promised him that one day I will give him fiddle lessons. Ah. Uh, Mr. Sweeney, this is Mr. Otka. Ah. Uh -huh. Doesn't say very much. Well, Mr. Sweeney is shy. This is Jared, Mr. Sweeney. He's my friend. Therefore, he's your friend. Oh. And, and are you living in the park? We are, indeed. But the cops will push you out. We've thought about that, Mr. Sweeney. Well, now it happens that there's a tool shed where you could set up your beautiful bed. A tool shed? Ah, no one knows of it except myself. That's where I keep my little cart. Come on, I'll take you there. Oh, Mr. Sweeney, you are indeed a friend. A beautiful man, Mr. Sweeney. Ah, here you are, gentlemen. No one will ever find you in my tool shed. Well, it's tight and snug. It is perfection. I'll set my candelabra on this high shelf. Gentlemen... You can live here until spring. Mr. Sweeney, in return for your kindness, I shall teach you how to play the fiddle. Ah. Oh. Right now we must set up our bed. Then I'll go hunt for some dinner. I'll put on the soup while you hunt. And, and I'll go home and tell my wife that I'm taking fiddle lessons. <laughs> uh, Mrs. Sweeney. Yes, sir. Uh, here's a piece in the evening paper says there's snow already in the West. You know, Mr. Sweeney, I do wish we had a bit of money put aside. Ah, uh, and what would you do with it if we had? I'd buy a canary. Oh, I'd buy a fiddle. Oh, well, then aren't you the grand one? A uh, sweet-toned fiddle with a bow and all. Oh, I'd play on it of an evening. Oh, a canary would cost much less than to make sweeter music. Mrs. Sweeney, I'm going to take the lessons how to play the fiddle. Oh! Mm -hmm. Starting tomorrow. There's a man living in my tool shed. Oh, whatever are you saying? It is him will teach me. Oh, it'll be a grand thing learning to play on the fiddle. Out of my way. Mr. 
Cheney. Oh, it's you. Here, sit on this bench. But they'll find me. I'll hold my umbrella over us. They'll think we're just a couple sitting in the rain. Oh, quick, here they come. You better let me hide that bunch of celery under my coat. Oh, yes, I, I shouldn't have taken it. Now, put your head on my shoulder so they can't see your face. So. It was a terrible thing to do. Is it a long time since you've eaten? I, I don't really remember. It seems like several days. You, you knew I wasn't a famous actress? Of course. But I could be, you know. I will be someday. Well, the truth is, uh, when you ran, a- ran into me, I-, I was going to the restaurant. Uh, there, behind the trees, to borrow something for our dinner. But that's where I got my salary. Well, what about your fine apartment that needed two candelabra? I've been living in a furnished room. Only this morning they told me not to come back until I pay them what I owe. Well, then you'll come home with me. Mr. Rosenwald and I will share our dinner with you. You have food? We have a pot of soup to which we will add this excellent bunch of celery. Oh, I, I couldn't. But you have no place else to go. No place to go. I'm frightened for the first time. I, I've lost my nerve, I guess. I, I really don't know what to do. Come. Let us go home. Oh, that's such a beautiful word. Home. Mr. Rosenwald? Oh, uh, Miss Cheney, this is Mr. Rosenwald. How do you do, Mr. Rosenwald? You are not a singer, I hope. I'm an actress. And Miss Cheney is going to have dinner with us. Is this a restaurant? I, I will go. I would not want to put you out. Mr. Rosenwald, she's going to cry. No, I am not. I've, I've done all my crying. I won't bother him. Thank you for saving me, Mr. Otcar. Keep the celery for your soup. Oh, no, no. You, you must take it. You, you had no food for several days. That does not matter. She, too, is hungry. Of course she is. A uh, Jared. Could you not have said to me, here is someone else who is hungry? Then I would have said, come in, young lady. Come in and share our food. You see, Miss Cheney, he is not a selfish man. Sit down, miss. Sit down. You are welcome. Thank you. Presently, we will have dinner. And here is celery to cut up in the soup. Celery will give it an entirely new flavor. It will not taste like the same soup we ate last night. (laughs) This is a wonderful place. Oh, the crystal candelabra. You have it here. Yes, I keep it on the high shelf so nothing can hurt it. And a great carved bed. All golden cupids and angels. I- I've never seen such a bed. You will sleep in it tonight. Is this a hotel? Miss Cheney has no home. You will sleep in the bed, Miss Cheney. <laughs> oh, what about you? Well, Mr. Rosenwald and I can rest on top of these tool chests wrapped in our overcoats. Anyway, until tomorrow. Maybe I won't wake up tomorrow. What are you saying? Maybe I'll sleep and sleep all through the cold, long winter. And I won't know how cold and hungry I am. Oh, but in the spring, the cherry trees will put out their sweet blossoms. You'll not see the blossoms, Miss Cheney, if if you're asleep. You are right. I do want to see the blossoms in the spring. I think I'll wake up early in the morning. Tomorrow you will feel differently about everything. I'm sure I will. The day will be full of hope. At least until noon. It is a beautiful day. Yes, the air is appetizing in the early morning. Perhaps today I'll find a job. I will visit a certain concert manager I know with an office in Carnegie Hall. There's a producer told me to come back this afternoon. He's casting a new play with a wonderful part that I could do. He told me I'm just right for it. Jared, what are you planning for today? I'll just walk in the park and do a little thinking. That's good. Mr. Arcar, I... I want to thank you for letting me stay here last night. And you too, Mr. Rosenwald. I, I don't know what I'd have done if you hadn't. It was a pleasure, Miss Chet. I, I do hope that we will all meet again. Oh, but you're coming back here tonight. Oh, no, I, I, I couldn't do that. Not again. Oh, but you must. You've no place else to go. You must come back. Mustn't she, Mr. Rosenwald? Why, yes. Of course she must. You, you want me to come back here? We do. Promise that you will. Well? I'll expect you not later than sunset. Promise. Very well, Mr. Otcar. I promise. In just a moment, we will continue with Act Two of the Hollywood Radio Theater. Make a friend and you make an ally. There's a thought for you to keep in mind, as many another American has. 
After living a life of a moderately successful farmer, Otto Hunderwaddle, with his wife, accepted a job as agricultural advisor to the government of Burma. At first, the Burmese weren't too anxious to work with the Americans, and Otto finally discovered why. They considered him and his wife too old for work. But the Hunderwaddles proved that age had nothing to do with the ability to work. And then the men accepted his help with their drainage and agricultural problems. And Mrs. Hunderwaddle showed the skeptical women how to can food. She was so successful that eventually she and Otto got permission from the Burmese government to build a local cannery. Well, shortly after it was built, however, misfortune struck. Civil war broke out, and the Hunderwaddles and their helpers were forced to abandon their homes. By the time they returned, the cannery was a shambles. But they weren't discouraged. While Otto remained in Burma to help the villagers rebuild their homes, Mrs. Hunderwaddle returned to the United States to raise money for a new cannery. By the time she returned to Burma, she had secured more than enough money and equipment. When last heard from, she and Otto were still helping the Burmese farmers and working in the cannery. For they learned that by helping others, you help your country. Now, Act Two of One More Spring, starring Jean Crane as Elizabeth. What a day this has been. Oh, it's you. Who else? Were you expecting the park commissioner? Elizabeth hasn't come back. The sun set half an hour ago. Yeah, I brought a bit of meat. She promised that she'd come back. I earned a bit of money today, playing Tchaikovsky on Fifth Avenue. A most appreciative audience. The people are always more musical after a heavy rain. I suppose we shouldn't have let her go this morning. I find Tchaikovsky pays much better than Beethoven. I thought she'd keep her word. Am I very late? Miss Cheney. Oh, you, you did come back. I, I said to myself that I wouldn't, but I've really no place else to go. You found a job? No. The play was cast, but, but they were very nice. Told me to see them in two months. And look, I brought some food. Food? Vegetables uh, and bread. An actress I know loaned me a dollar. She has a job in the show. I guess I must have looked a little pale or something. Anyway, she insisted that I borrow a dollar, so I, I did. Miss Cheney, I am glad you came back. And you, Mr. Otcar? I would not have slept tonight if you hadn't. Those are the kindest words that have been said to me in... In a long, long time. Yeah, there's so little kindness in the world, so little tenderness. Ah, Mr. Sweeney, come in. This is Mr. Sweeney, Miss Cheney. How do you do, Mr. Sweeney? Ah. <laughs> Mr. Sweeney is studying to be a violinist. Every night I give him a private lesson in return for the use of his tool shed. <laughs> That's the best way I ever heard of paying one's rent. So I take out my fiddle and proceed with the lesson while you two cook dinner. I will listen. I'm very fond of music. Yeah? I will cook dinner. Now, Mr. Sweeney, are we ready? Ha ha. Excellent. First, I will do it. That is how it should be done, Mr. Sweeney. Ah. Now, here, you take the fiddle. So, now, you try it. And the fingers come down. So. Ah. That was beautiful, Mr. Sweeney. With patience, someday, he will play a little piece. Ah. <laughs> hey, Mrs. Sweeney. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Rosenwald gave me a fiddle lesson just now before I came home. Oh, did he know? Uh, I can't rightly seem to get the hang of it yet. Why don't you say what's on your mind, Mr. Sweeney? Huh? Well, then, um, they've got a girl there in the tool house. Oh, pretty little thing. It seems she has no home. And is that what's been on your mind all evening? It's all right, then, about the girl, her staying there and all. I don't know, Mr. Sweeney. Leave me put my mind on it. Oh, she's a sweet little thing, Mary. She'll be all right there, Mr. Sweeney. It is a fine thing that your friends have someone to share their life. Ah. Everyone needs a bit of happiness. You know, Mr. Sweeney, 
I've been thinking we might spend the money we've got on our savings come Christmas for a canary. Oh, you're a good woman, Mary. Oh, yes, it would be a happy house with a canary in it, singing its little heart away. A good woman. Young lady, young lady, please. Are you following me? Well, yes, I... Because if you I... are, I'll call a cop. There's a law for that sort of thing, you oh, know. Oh, young lady, you misunderstand me. I saw you drop your purse on a path back near the little bridge. Well, that's very funny. What's funny about it? <laughs> Did you open my purse? Did you look inside? My dear child, I'm the president of a bank. Why should I look inside your purse? <laughs> Why are you laughing? <laughs> because there's nothing inside it. Not a penny. Well, here, take it. Thank you very much. Entirely welcome. Are you really the president of a bank? Do, do you like your work? Well, I, I've never considered the matter in precisely that way, but yes, I like it. That's all I really care about, my bank. All you care about? Is it really? Well, just the same, I can see that you're really very unhappy. I'm nothing of the sort. I noticed you just now as I walked past the lake. You were standing there, looking at the water with such a strange expression on your face. Is there anything I can do to help you? To help me? Are you a failure, too? A failure? I've told you I'm the president of a bank. And I'm not in the habit of talking with strangers in Central Park. Good evening, young lady. You're very rude, even if you are the president of a bank. Miss Cheney? Mr. Hotcar. Oh, you, you startled me. Well, I've been waiting here behind these bushes. I came looking for you. But Mr. Rosenwald, I have a surprise for you. Uh, just as I saw you, that man came running after you. I dropped my purse and he found it. Yeah, I waited to see what he was up to. What's the surprise you have for me? Come, I'll show you. Mr. Rosenwald is waiting for us. It was he who discovered it. Now, even if you don't like our surprise, please, please tell Mr. Rosenwald that you do. And you cannot guess what this large object is? Oh, let me see it. It can't be a building, all hidden under canvas. Oh, no, no, not a building. An automobile, perhaps? Uh, she'll never guess, Mr. Rosenwald. Pull the covers away and surprise her. Very well, I pull them down. So. Oh, it's a merry-go-round. A carousel. Covered for the night in case of bad weather. Such beautiful animals. Horses and, and giraffes. You, you like your surprise, Miss Elizabeth? I, I think it's the most wonderful surprise I ever had. Come, Miss Elizabeth. You shall ride upon the carousel. Will it work? Well, I'll push it around with this wooden handle. Well, I play music for you. Just let me get my fiddle out of its case. Now come, climb up, Miss Cheney, and, and sit on one of the animals. Which shall it be? I've never before ridden on a merry-go-round. See, I, I know. I'll ride the green giraffe. Now, let me help you. Thank you, Mr. Hotcar. Uh, up you go. A waltz for Miss Elizabeth. Now, hold tight. <laughs> to fly through the stars on my green giraffe. Well, there are no stars tonight. It's been cloudy all day. Oh, you're wrong. There are stars. Millions of stars. There are always stars for those with eyes to see them. It's beginning to snow. So quiet. Quiet. Somebody's coming. It's a man running like a policeman. Oh, Mr. Rosenwald. Mr. Rosenwald. Mr. Sweeney. Ah. Oh, who... Uh, my friends. Mr. Sweeney. I heard you fiddle. It sounded as though the wee people were dancing in the park. Are you disappointed? It's only us? Oh, not at all. No. I was just after looking for you in the tool house. Uh, Mrs. Sweeney, that's me dear wife, has asked me to invite all of you to our apartment for Christmas dinner. Christmas dinner? And how soon would that be? Well, sometime next week. I suppose we can wait. <laughs> You'll come. Of course we'll come, Mr. Sweeney, with pleasure. Now, turn the merry-go-round, Mr. Otcar. I want another ride on my green giraffe. Music, Mr. Rosenwald. Are you sure this is the right apartment? Well, it, it said on the mailbox, Michael Sweeney, apartment 5C. Yes, and this is it. 
Merry Christmas to all of you. Ah, come in, come in, come Is in. that delicious aroma roast chicken? Oh, look at the beautiful Christmas tree. Merry Christmas, Mr. Sweeney. Come on, get out of your coat. See it free, Mr. Rosenwald. With a little angel on top. I have a feeling the chicken is stuffed with chestnuts. Uh, make yourself comfortable. Mrs. Sweeney, here's a, a little present I brought. Present for me? Be careful. Just open the shoebox a cracky. You might fly away. Oh, is it a canary? No. No, it, it's only a sparrow. It doesn't sing much, but it, it makes a kind of peep. <laughs> All my life I've wanted a bird. Well, isn't he a cute little fellow? Peep, peep, birdie. Peep, peep. Maybe he will sing a little in the spring. Or perhaps they could dye him yellow and he would look like a canary. Oh, oh but he might not like that. <clears throat> perhaps you're right. Uh, look, look, my friends, would you see what my dear wife gave me? A violin. Can I believe my eyes? Oh, uh, just take it in your hands, Mr. Rosenwald. Mm. Yes. Tis a fine fiddle. It's got yours beat for shine. It is indeed the shiniest fiddle I have ever seen. <laughs> will you try it now till I hear how it sounds? <clears throat> Would you listen to that? Beautiful. Beautiful. You play something, Mr. Sweeney. I would not deprive you of your new fiddle on the first day you have it. Ah. Play us a fine scale, Mr. Sweeney, love. <laughs> Sherry. Yes? Come here, near the door. Well, we mustn't be rude. Oh, Mr. Sweeney's playing. Miss Cheney, do you know anything about mistletoe? Very little. Well, in ancient days, the Druids believed there was a kind of magic in the mysterious berries. Did they? Today, we no longer believe in magic. But if we were only a bit wiser, we'd realize that while the magic has gone out of the mistletoe, it has never left our hearts. What are you saying? You should never stand under the mistletoe, Miss Cheney, unless you're willing to be kissed. Oh, but, but I am willing. Most willing, Jerry. Oh. Three of the Hollywood Radio Theater will continue in just a few moments. You know, the world is in pretty good shape when people try to outdo each other in doing things for others. <laughs> if that sounds a little confused, uh, let me tell you what I mean. In Tokyo, two of the commanding generals' honor guard platoons each adopted an orphanage. They sent work parties to repair roofs, walls, ceilings, windows, and floors to fix the plumbing and renew kitchen and heating facilities. Intense rivalry developed between the units as to which could do the most. Each platoon solicited money at its pay tables. They bought bolts of cloth and had warm clothes made for their protégés. It's the kind of game, the kind of a rivalry that we like to hear about, because it's one in which everybody wins. And such acts by you and your friends today are shaping our world of tomorrow. for station identification. is on Act Three of One More Spring, starring Jean Crane as Elizabeth. Dinner is nearly ready, Mr. Rosamond. Good. Where did Jared go? He said he was going out for a walk. In all this snow. Mm -hmm. That was a fine dinner last week of Mrs. Sweeney's. I never before tasted the white meat of chicken. It was most interesting. <laughs> Mr. Rosenwall, I... I cannot live like this. So? It, it's not natural. Well, why have you stayed? What do you want? I... I want to be cherished. We all want something. I want to hear music again. Real music. I want to give a concert. My heart tells me that I must make music. Don't you think my heart also tells me something? What does your heart tell you, Miss Elizabeth? It tells me that I need affection and love, because that's what it's made for. 
will die otherwise, my heart and I. My heart will stop beating. Mr. Rosenwald, Miss Cheney. It's Mr. Otcar. Open the door. Something has happened. Help me. What is it? This man, help me carry him inside. Why, why, it's the banker who found my purse. How did he get so wet? He jumped into the lake. Close the door, we'll all have pneumonia. Oh, we have no blankets or hot water bottles. No medicine. Why did you bring him here? Did you expect me to let him freeze to death? Oh, you have so little sense. Bringing people home with you. There are hospitals. We'll take these wet clothes off him and get him into bed. He's a rich man. Well, if you aren't going to help, at least you can be quiet. The president of a bank, and yet you bring him to a tool shed. Go away. Don't bother me. Very well. I will go away. Oh, Miss Cheney. I should have gone weeks ago. In fact, I should never have come here in the first place. Yeah, but I didn't mean... I'll go away, and I'll never come back. Miss Cheney. You feeling better, Mr. Sheridan? You've saved my life, but don't ask me to be grateful. Why did you jump into the lake? Because I've lost everything in the world that's worth having. Oh? What would that be? I've lost my bank, and with it, my position in the world. Well, position is not as important as you might imagine. Now, I am a concert violinist, yet it has been two years since I gave my last concert. I'm very tired. I don't know what to do, where to go. You can remain here with us. For a short time, perhaps, until I can think of something. Well, you're welcome to stay here as long as you wish. You... He's asleep. Mr. Rosemont, where do you suppose Miss Cheney's gone? How would I know? Well, it's been several hours. Maybe she, too, will jump into the lake. Now, now don't say such a thing. <laughs> Never forgive myself letting her go like that. She's lost somewhere, and it's all my fault. I have come back. Oh, Elizabeth. Well, don't stand there, you two. Take some of these bundles out of my arms. Elizabeth, what's in all these packages? Blankets, aspirin, nose spray, cough drops, and, and food. Food? Now, don't. You can all be as thick as you like. All three of you. Well, Elizabeth, where did you get these things? I bought them. But you have no money. I got some. How? Where? Have you forgotten? I'm an actress, and I've been acting. You've been what? Someday I'll show you what I did. Right now, help me get all these things unwrapped. A hot water bottle. Oh, Elizabeth, I, I am glad that you've come back. Thank you, Jerry. Now, we must take our te patient's temperature. I've even bought a thermometer. Elizabeth, I discovered tonight... I love you. Did you, Jerry? All this talk about love. Don't you hear those bells? It's midnight. The start of another year. Oh, I would like to wish a happy new year to all the world. That's how happy I am. Happy new year, world. Happy new year. Another spoonful of soup, Mr. Sheridan? Mmm, that's the best soup I ever tasted. So, another spoonful. Ah. Where is everyone? Mr. Rosenwald's playing his violin on Fifth Avenue, and Jared went for a walk. Today, he is thinking about the future. The future? <laughs> what future? You're all failures here. Mr. Sheridan. You too. Now, why don't you give up your dreams of being an actress? Study shorthand or something. No, I cannot give up my dreams. At least, not yet. And as for your friend, Mr. Otka, I, I can't even discover what he wants to do in the world. Well, he isn't sure himself. Not yet. Hmm. How long have I been here with you? Nearly three weeks now. Very curious. You people seem to have done something to me. The fate of my bank is no longer a matter of great interest. I wonder if I'm still out of my head. I don't think so. You've had no fever for several days. I suppose the police will be looking for me. Why would they be looking for you, Mr. Sheridan? What have you done? I took money from the bank and invested it in foreign currency. It's lost, every dollar of it. Was this your money? Of course not. Not a penny of it. Well, then you should replace it with your own money. Replace it? Well, if you'll excuse my saying so, it, it seems fairly obvious that you should, doesn't it? Well, I... I suppose you're right. You know, I think I've been overworking. I must have been. A bank president shouldn't get himself into a situation like this. Mr. Sheridan, isn't there someone you'd like me to notify that you're here? Oh, no, there isn't anyone to be interested in my whereabouts. No family? All I have is a big, empty house. No friend. Only you and Jared and Mr. Rosenwald. Miss Cheney, I want you to know 
I've been very happy here. I know. I've been happier myself since I came here. Happier than ever before in all my life. And what's more, I'm going to stay here. Oh, but Mr. Sheridan, you, you can. Now I feel a bit tired. I think I'll take a nap. Oh, if the police should come, tell them I was waiting to give myself up until after my fever went down. Wake me in time for dinner. Yes, Mr. Sheridan. This is where I earned my money. Remember that night you rescued Mr. Sheridan from the lake? Here, in Columbus Circle? Let us walk among the people, and, and I will show you. Oh, but Elizabeth... Come, you will see it for yourself. Jerry, you'd better move away from me until I've finished. Finished what? Well, what are you going to do? You'll see. Now, pretend you don't know me. Elizabeth. Ladies and gentlemen, please. Well, look at her. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I am an actress. <laughs> At once that I've had very little experience. However, I believe that I do have talent. I'll let you judge for yourselves. I, I really would like to do a scene from a play for you. Is there anyone here who could help me? Perhaps a scene from, from Shakespeare that you remember from school. Well, I once played Orlando. In As You Like It. Where was this? At Brooklyn College. Oh. Well, do you remember this scene? <clears throat> How now, Orlando? Where have you been all this while? Uh, how now? Uh, I think I remember. You, a lover. And you serve me such another trick. Never come in my sight now. My fair Rosalind, I come within an hour of my promise. Break an hour's promise in love. He that will divide a minute into a thousand parts and break but a part of the thousandth part of a minute in the affairs of love. It may be said of him that Cupid hath clapped him on the shoulder, but I'll warrant him heart whole. Hey, hey, oh, my dear, yes, pardon me, dear Rosalind. Nay, and you be so tardy, come no more in my sight. I had as lief be wooed of a snail. <laughs> of a snail? Nay, of a snail. For though he comes slowly, he carries his house on his head. <laughs> You cannot play it if you hold it in your stomach. Oh. Ah, here's your wife. Mr. Rosenwald. Mrs. Sweeney. Oh, my darling. Oh, let me sit down. I'm that worn out. A bad day at the bank. I had no idea you worked for a bank. Oh, for ten years I've operated an elevator there. Down and up, down and up. Until the day of the tragedy. Since then, it's been down and down. What tragedy was this? Well, the president of the bank, he disappeared. When was this? What was his name? Oh, about two months ago, and Sheridan's his name. I thought so. Oh, such a fine gentleman he was. Where has he gone? Do they know? Oh, now he traces him until this very day. Today? Someone reported seeing the poor man in Central Park. Good heavens, I must go at once. Well, the police are searching the park. You'll probably be asked to help, Mr. Sweeney, my love. Uh, uh, what about me fiddle lesson? I'll finish it tomorrow. Oh. So come on, let's get to the park. <laughs> Mr. Sheridan, there is he. Here I am. We're just sitting down for dinner. Is anything wrong? What's wrong. The park is full of police. The alarm is out. Somebody saw our banker. Well, they'll never find him here. I shall grow a beard. Mm. But at the moment, I'm going to eat my dinner. Come on, sit down, everybody. Sit down. Let's walk across the park to Fifth Avenue. There'll be cops over that way, Mr. Sheridan. Never recognize me now that I've grown a beard. Miss Elizabeth, will you take my arm? Why, thank you. Jared said he'd be along in a minute. You two go ahead. I'll keep my eye out for him. Oh, the air is very soft this afternoon, Mr. Sheridan. Yes, and sweet. As though there might never be another winter. Could this be the, the first day of spring? Not yet. Not for another week at the very earliest. <laughs> <laughs> I saw Violet this morning down by the lake. Miss Cheney, I must talk with you. Well, Mr. Sheridan? 
Now, Miss Cheney, you said something many weeks ago about my using my own money to make things right at the bank. And what have you decided? I'm going to use my own money to replace the money that belongs to the depositors. Oh, I'm sure the depositors will be most grateful. <laughs> Of course, I have always had a very special attitude about my own money. But lately, living here with you, I've learned to look at things quite differently. Have you really, Mr. Sheridan? Oh, you and Jared and Mr. Rosenwald, you've given me a new courage. I think I've gotten most of it from you, Miss Cheney. From me? Oh, but, but I have no courage. None at all. And I intend to give myself up to the first policeman I meet. What will they do to you, Mr. Sheridan? Oh, very little, I imagine, if I return all the money. We'll miss you. Ah, these have been the happiest months of my entire life. I know exactly what you mean. I suppose soon it will be all over for me. Hello, there's a parade down Fifth Avenue. Yes, I hear a band. It must be the first parade of the season. Come, we'll get to Fifth Avenue before Mr. Rosenwald overtakes us. He and Jared are way behind. Where there's a parade, there will be policemen, and I will surrender to them. Mr. Sheridan. I will give myself up. Oh, one parade is like another. Do you see any policemen in the crowd? Yes, there's one down at the corner. A very young policeman. I'll surrender to him. That would be good. There might be a reward, and he may have a wife and several small children. Oh, bless you, Elizabeth Cheney. Yours is the pure heart. Are you saying here so that you'll not be involved? I prefer to do this alone. Goodbye, Miss Elizabeth. Goodbye. Is it not Mr. Sheridan? Oh, sure. Yeah, that's your Mr. Banker. Yeah, it's not the police. Mrs. Sweeney, how is Elizabeth? Still unconscious. The doctor says it will be several hours before he can tell if she has a concussion. Oh, that mob of fools, they knocked her down. Well, at least she had the sense to bring her here. There was no place else. When the ambulance driver asked where she lived, I couldn't tell him the tool house in Central Park. It is a good thing it happened on a Saturday and me home from the bank. I'll go back and sit with her for a while. I will see that you don't disturb her. I'll not make a sound. Absolutely to give, nothing but my love, my heart, which is of no use to anyone. You must live. Soon we'll have another spring, and you said once that you wanted to see the blossoms again. Do not die, my love. Let there be one more spring. Jared? Elizabeth. I I heard what you just said. Oh, my darling. We will see the blossoms together. That's it, Birdie. Peep, peep. Peep. Oh, I wish I knew some magic spell, Mrs. Sweeney. And could change this sparrow into a canary for you. Oh, no, I've come to be very fond of the poor bird. Hello there. Mr. Atka. Mrs. Sweeney. Oh, you two sit here by the window. I've dishes to wash. Call if there's anything you want. Thank you, Mrs. Sweeney. How do you feel tonight, Elizabeth? Oh, very well, thank you. The doctor says I, I can leave here whenever I wish. I'm glad. I have been talking to the sparrow. Now that spring is coming, I think he wants to be free again. I'm going to talk to Mrs. Sweeney and ask her to let him go when the first green leaves appear. Oh, Jared, where am I going when I leave here? Well, I I can't take you back to the tool house. I've been living there alone. Mr. Rosenwald has disappeared. Jared. Yes, Elizabeth? You called me darling once. Yes, I did. But only because I thought you couldn't hear me. Why? Why? Well, I'm much older than you, Elizabeth. At least ten years. What is ten years? I'm wise enough to have no illusions about myself. You are 
fond of me as you are fond of every living creature, even this little sparrow. Oh, much more than fond, Jared. I... I love you. Love me? But I... Nothing, nothing to give you in return for your love. Neither wealth, nor hope, nor promises. You can give me love, Jared. That's all I ask, all I want, your love. That's not enough. Good night, Elizabeth. Where are you going? To walk in the park. I must think about all this. No, Jared. No, come back. Mr. Sweeney, I have the most wonderful news. Oh, come in, lad. Come in. Who is it, Mr. Sweeney? It's me, Mr. Sweeney. Jared. I'm rich. Oh, whatever are you saying? Well, this morning, a man came to the door of the tool house, offered $2,000 in cash for my antique bed. Oh, you took it, did you not? I did, at once. I was looking for you this morning, Mrs. Oh, oh, that must have been while I was out buying a car. Oh, oh car is this? A second-hand car to take Elizabeth riding in. The rest of the money I'm going to give Elizabeth to rent a little apartment for herself. Oh, but Jared, you... I'll slip in now and tell her the news. Uh, Jared, Elizabeth isn't here. Oh, where is she? Well, she drove off in a big car with a fine chauffeur. Here's the address where she went. Well, Mrs. Sweeney and I were just going to visit her. Huh? Over on Fifth Avenue. Well, I'll come with you. My car's outside. I'll drive you there. Hey, huh? There's a light in every window. Looks like a palace. Well, what's Elizabeth doing in a place like this? Oh, ring the bell, Mr. Sweeney, love. Oh, do I look all right? This must be a private home. Good evening. Uh, we're, we're looking for Miss Elizabeth Cheney. Come in, please. Thank you. Ah, it is a fine mansion. If you will step into the ballroom, the uh, concert will begin in a moment. Concert? What concert? This way. Come along, Mr. Sweeney, dear. Ah. Mr. Opcar. Yes? Well, I'm glad to see you. Oh, Mr. Sheridan, what are you doing here? Oh, this is my home. You live in, in this museum? <laughs> it is, isn't it? Oh, come, I have something to show you. Come along upstairs. Well, do you know what's happened to Elizabeth? Miss Cheney, you'll see her in good time. Right now, I want you to... Jared. Start. Jared. I'm giving a concert. Mr. Rosemore, where have you been? Here with Mr. Sheridan. He has invited a very select audience tonight to hear me play. Even a few critics. Jared, I'm giving a concert. See you later. Good luck. And here we are, Mr. Atka. Well, of course. It was you who bought my bed. Didn't you guess? No, I didn't even suspect. I had one of my assistants buy it for me. Doesn't it look handsome in here? Yes, but why did you want it? If you told me, I'd have given it to you. I wanted it as a sort of memento of these past months. I'll keep it here to remind me of all the good things that I discovered with you and Miss Cheney in Central Park. Affection and kindness. I heard and... your voice, Jim. Elizabeth. Oh, Elizabeth. How beautiful you look. This is a new dress. Mr. Sheridan gave it to me. Oh? Oh, I, I see. You'll be living here with Mr. Sheridan and Mr. Rosenwald. Don't be a fool, Jared. Elizabeth's been waiting all evening for you to come. That's all she's talked about. Ah, Mr. Rosenwald's begun his concert, and I'd better join the guests downstairs. You two come down when you've finished talking. Elizabeth. Oh, Jared, I was afraid you wouldn't come. There's so much I want to say. I know. Isn't it wonderful the way things have worked out? Mr. Sheridan repaid all the money at the bank. He said he was suffering from amnesia. That's why he disappeared. And he still has lots of money left. Millions, I guess. He's going to sponsor Mr. Rosenwald's career. Well, what about you, Elizabeth? Me? Why, I guess that's up to you, Jared. Uh, look, I can't talk here. This place smothers me. I'll get my coat, and we'll leave. Don't you want to hear the concert? Mr. Rosenwald won't miss us. I bought a car. It's waiting outside. A car? Second hand. Come along. We'll drive to the moon tonight. Just the two of us. Yes, Jared? Uh, I've more than a thousand dollars left from the money Mr. Sheridan paid for the bed. A thousand dollars? We could get married on that. Oh, yes, we could. Elizabeth, I, I'm still not sure that I'm ready to settle down. Uh, I have a feeling that 
that I want to see something of the country before I decide about what I want to do. Well, you have a car now. Would you be willing to travel with me? Wherever you go, Jared, I want to come with you. Well, what about your plans? Well, about being an actress. They can wait. Well, we could start off tomorrow. Drive south until we meet spring and then... Yes, Jared. Oh, my darling. Do you... Do you suppose people will say I'm marrying you to get... To get your crystal candelabra? <laughs> I don't care what people will say. Well, where shall we drive now? There's just one place I'd like to go. Where's that? I'd like to ride in the moonlight through Central Park. In a moment, Gene Crane will return. Shortly after World War II... Some army officers in the Philippines took the time and trouble to find out that their houseboy had one burning ambition, one desire in life, and that was to come to the United States and study for the Baptist ministry. Well, they took it upon themselves to do a lot of corresponding and arranging, and they finally obtained a four-year scholarship for him at Eastern New Mexico College. Then the woman's missionary union heard about the boy, and they offered him a two-year seminary scholarship. But there was still a mighty important question. The question of raising $440 for his passage to the United States. And it was in an army chapel that Catholic, Protestant, and Jewish servicemen joined together to collect the funds so that this boy might become a Baptist minister. Such acts by you and your friends today are shaping our world of tomorrow. And now, here's Gene Craig. You know, this is the time of the year they elect the most beautiful girls to be queen of something. Why, Ken, that's right. <laughs> as the Orange Grove queen, the queen of iced tea, or what have you. And I'd like to nominate you as the Technicolor queen. Why, that's a charming compliment, Ken. Yes, because in Technicolor, everyone can see what a really lovely complexion you have. Well, I do give it the very best care. And if you really like Technicolor, I suggest my latest picture for 20th Century Fox. City of Bad Men. Good deal. And we hope you'll be listening to the Summer Theater next week when we'll have a most unusual story, Cinera, starring a very excellent actor, Joseph Cotton. I'd love to hear it. Good night. Good night, Gene. Hollywood Radio Theater is a presentation of the United States Armed Forces Radio Service. Thank you.